Have you ever scrolled through Instagram and you see a story of someone who's working on his computer and he's showing off a calendar completely filled up with events? Or you see a that girl TikTok where she wakes up at 5 a.m., she hits soul cycle, she works the entire day and still has time for a dinner party. A perfect woman or man who seemingly has time for everything. Their morning routine rivals Patrick Bateman, their LinkedIn is stellar and social life fully, fully booked, and you can't quite reach that level. In reality, the pursuit of doing everything is a trap. Trust me, I've been there looking at my overflowing calendar, feeling much more overwhelmed rather than accomplished. And this video isn't about joining that race. Instead, take a radically different approach, the philosophy of essentialism based on the groundbreaking work of Greg McKeown. The central premise of essentialism isn't about getting more things done, it's about getting the right things done. Do not confuse busyness with effectiveness. I remember admiring people with packed calendars, thinking they led the most interesting lives. And I tried to emulate that. I tried to squeeze in every possible request, every possible task, saying yes to every favor. Dispersing myself into all the different tasks meant that I was doing a lot, but not actually doing anything particularly well. This applies not only to daily life, but also to business ideas and creative projects. And I would rather have tunnel vision on one project at a time and then succeed in it and move on to the next when I'm ready. The philosophy of essentialism breaks this down into three actionable sections, which is explore, eliminate, and execute, each guiding you to where your yes should be. First, explore. Essentialists research their options more than non-essentialists. They don't dive into the next shiny idea or the next shiny project before they actually researched it well enough. I long believed that I was a bad procrastinator because it took me a really long time to start new projects. But now I realize that maybe I was just taking an essentialist route, checking my options and figuring out what actually aligns with my values best. Also creates space for deep thinking. Everyone needs that uninterrupted hour a day where you can just dedicate it to reading, reflecting, or creating. Think and... Right, that you <laughs> control your time and that sitting and thinking uh, may be a much higher priority than a normal CEO who, you know, there's all this demand and you feel like you need to go and see all these people. Uh, it's not a proxy of your seriousness that you filled every minute in your schedule. And people uh, are going to want to want your time. Yeah, and it's the only thing you can't buy. I mean, I can buy anything I want, the, 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 basically, but I can't buy time. Warren Buffett is famous for having a wide open schedule. Bill Gates is famous for taking two weeks off every year just to sit and reflect and think in solitude. A Harvard study found that people who spend 15 minutes a day reflecting on the lessons they learned perform 23% better than people who don't. Second, eliminate. You can either do a lot of things averagely well or you can do a few things superbly well. So be selfish with your time and separate the wheat from the chaff. But how do you prioritize correctly? The word priority came from the Latin word prior, which means the first, the most important. Interestingly, it's always been a singular word. There was no concept of priorities. But in 20th century, it was actually demoted to its plural form of priorities. But in truth, can there be multiple firsts, if you think about it? There's this maximalist idea of, if I set my mind to it, I can do everything. And this is so beautiful, so inspiring, and so false. It's a very well romanticized and overrated fallacy. Yes, you can do anything, but you most certainly cannot do everything. Peter Drucker, one of the most influential thinkers and the father of the modern management theory, believed that people are effective because they know how to say no. One creativity researcher was writing a book and he invited Drucker for an interview to spill the tea on his productivity hacks. When Drucker received an invitation, he responded, The secret to productivity is to have a very big waste paper basket, to take care of all invitations such as yours. Of course, you don't have to be as direct when declining an offer, but 
this is where all the people-pleasing fantasies that you might have, have to leave. Third, execute. Now create the best possible conditions for working in flow. Having a clean, organized and quiet environment is key, if you of course have the privilege to do so. Create buffers between activities. This means intentionally carving out a couple minutes between your current task you're doing and the next one, so that you have a little bit of time to reset your brain and prepare yourself for the next task. Research says that this drastically improves productivity, and now I spend a couple minutes before every meeting to gather my thoughts and reset myself to get into the meeting with a clear and focused mind. Keep in mind that cutting a lot of things from your routine does not mean that you're not challenging yourself anymore. You are still capable of giving your absolute all in all of your relationships, all of your work and projects. But now, instead of working on five projects at a time, you're working on one project. And this turns into visible progress much quicker because all of your energy goes into one thing. I hope this video inspires you to take the essentialist approach. Give it a try and you'll see that by doing less, you're actually achieving more. Guys, we got to a thousand subscribers in under a month and I can't describe how happy I am knowing that this channel grew so fast because I did not expect it. Uh, thank you very much for all of the warm messages that you've been sending me and please let me know in the comments section what other topics you'd like to explore. Thank you.